What do you call a funny mountain? Hilarious. Hello everyone, Busy Gamer Dad back again. Picked up Children of Morta uh, from the Steam Next Fest, or not Next Fest, sorry, Steam Spring Fest in 2024. And I have fallen in love with this game. I uh, would call this a hidden gem for myself. I don't know how many people seem to know about this game or don't know about this game, but if you haven't gotten this game or seen gameplay from it, you know, take a look at this video. Let me know what you think. But I think the art style is awesome. I think the combat is really tight. So basically, you are a, a family of heroes that are essentially uh, blocking off the fate of the world from a total annihilation where you're in service to a god and or goddess and you're trying to save the world. And it's such a cool game. I think that I would have played this game sooner had I known it existed. And the fact that I got it on sale makes it even better. I will have a link for you guys in the description for this game. But like I said, I've only done a little bit of the game and the narrative is top notch. The voice acting, whoever they got as the narrator of this is stellar. I have never heard anyone uh, like him before. He does an excellent job with it and it's a very compelling story. So you can take my word for it or not. That's up to you. I got a little bit of a play test up there. So there is online mode for this game. There's an online component. You can play with a friend. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that or not. Um, there's a bunch of DLCs for this. I currently do not have those. So we're just playing the base game right now. I'm going to leave it in normal um, just because that's where my play style is being a busy gamer. I don't want to too much of a challenge, but sometimes I'll go back. And as I understand it, you can change the difficulty on the fly if you so choose. But this opening scene is awesome. Like, it got me hooked right away. Margaret awoke, startled, a cold sweat mm -hmm. clinging to her. Yeah. She gathered her thoughts. Aged wood creaked, echoing through the quiet rooms. I mean, just like, like I said, the opening sequence just got me hooked. Near the house stood a shrine to Rhea Dana, goddess and daughter of the land, of Rhea and a being of comfort. The type of fantasy Margaret sought answers in this game is very the different. Did not speak. There was only the faint whisper of something dark, something hungry. The old seer's bones felt the weight of their age as she climbed. Like the emphasis that he puts on this. Awesome. The only thought on her mind, has it begun again? I would call this like science fiction fantasy or fantasy science fiction. You don't really see like too much science fiction there's definitely influences in a lot of the ruins that you see in the game. John's mission would be a simple one. He was to investigate Rhea's greatest shrine. <laughs> His mother presented him with a fresh divinity shard. Mm -hmm. From his brother came a newly sharpened sword. His wife gave him a kiss, and his daughter's hugs were full of reason to return home safe. Yeah, just so awesome. So I played for a little bit, 
at this point, but I want to make sure I capture this opening tutorial for you guys so you can see what the game flows like and, you know, see the tutorial and understand. But definitely the subsequent videos after this one will have a lot more uh, immersed gameplay or further along gameplay. So the Bergensons, what they are is they're heroes that are tasked with protecting the land. And Mother Margaret has this vision of impending doom. John, her son, has to go out and find out what's going on. And then you have a, a cast of characters that are all family members. Um, I believe all family members. I don't want to make that grandiose statement without further you know, knowledge. But at the time of my recording or playthrough, I have only unlocked family members. And they all have different, uh, I will say, archetypes. You know, John is your standard fighter, sword and board guy. You have an archer. You have um, uh, a dagger wielding person. You have a magic user. You have a... Um, uh, a monk, uh, but like the the art style, the pixelated art style is awesome. It just really is. It, so how the gameplay f flows, Rhea, you'll see. A land long this is just a tutorial. A place of unimaginable beauty. To help shape the world for you. Okay, this isn't really super indicative of the um, uh, of the 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 mechanics of the game, but it's a rogue like in its uh, roots. Sludge given life slithering creatures small and vile so as we get through the tutorial you're going to have your standard attacks that you got to do so swing right here i am playing with a controller i would recommend that you play with a controller that's just i think the easiest way i tried playing with um mouse and keyboard and i just couldn't get the rhythm and the mechanics down uh that's just me um some people who have maybe faster uh dexterity they could certainly uh handle it a lot better but i was just struggling with it and i found that once i plugged in my keyboard i was having a much better time so keep that in mind for either playthrough i think either are completely viable uh, but as far as the mechanics go i just felt like i had a better grasp on them when i was using control so this is just your standard tutorial you know we got to fight the corruption that's basically the idea of the whole um game itself is fighting the corruption and uh seeing what's going wrong with the world but there's also side quests in between your narrative that are uh super awesome to uh bring to the forefront or bring back to home as you would with your oh no nope, getting, getting at me um your john hat also so he's your sword and board guy but he has the least amount of dodges that i've run into right now um look at that health file and he, his attack is currently, I don't want to say too bold. Uh, well, I guess there's another character whose attacks also stun, depending on if you can land them, but they are really short range. you got to get really up in the thick of things um, uh, to, to get their attacks to land. And it's worth it. You know, that's their whole mechanic is to get up in there and just slay them uh, real fast and dirty. But yeah, you'll see that there's corruption all around. We have to oh, save the world from it. Progress. A battle was certain. All right, so now we have a shield. It's telling me to use the shield to block. And John's shield is a mechanic that is... I I have not found a, a easy way to use it, but there are certain times when it's like, oh, yeah, I definitely should have shielded there. Like, I can see where I made a mistake is what it comes down to, where I definitely needed to um, board rather than sword, essentially is what it comes down to. And then there's damage on touch, which is kind of annoying from these little blob guys. I would I would think so, because they're just acid, but yeah. So we'll move through, we'll use our shard, banished by light banish itself, the wall here. The corruption abated, leaving the shard cold in hand, dark mm. in need of life. Again, see that, the guy who did this is awesome. The, the narrative they, the narrator they chose for this is just really, really awesome. So we have to get a gemstone from the corpse. The shard grew warm, humming softly from the harnessed energy. The shard grew warm. And then this is like your softly from the harnessed energy. Um, your roguelike mechanics, where you get different relics that you can have before on different uh, runs. More dangerous than those that came before. These guys are super annoying. So you can't stun lock them. You can't. Um, uh, uh, handle them the same way, and that's a really cool mechanic. I think they, that's a really awesome idea. Uh, let's hear. Oh, so we got our skill point. Nice. Okay. So each character has their own specific skill tree. But the cool thing about this game is that 
you can um yeah it's telling it's on the rails i can't not pick the heavenly sword but the cool thing that i've seen about this game is there's actually universal upgrades for uh every uh uh family member essentially uh okay it's great so awesome i've done it can i why is it not letting me all right there we go so uh let me go back in there real quick so each character has their own skill tree to explore and to level up as they get stronger you'll get access to a lot more abilities and they're meaningful they are impactful they really are and it's a good uh drip free feed for the player but the cool thing about the uh skill trees is these are not um the, the ones on the leftmost side here are not your uh or exclusive to that character so as you get this character up to level 20 each one of these nodes is unlocked for the whole family member as i understand it so increases the max health of all family members family members gain heavenly strike as their uh from their abilities like so there's a lot of uh incentive for you to play different characters not just stick with one or stick with one max it out and then go back through and level up the other characters goblins a familiar threat Albeit oh, farther out than usual. Yep. So I'll do that. Dodge this way. These archers are the bane of my existence. But you can... Oh, I thought I finished this guy off. You can... Um, shield bash. Or shield, shield block their arrows. But it is directional. You have to be conscious of which way you're facing. Uh, I don't think there's any other. Inherently violent and ill-bathed. Seems I blocked that one. Good. Unfocused but constant threat. Nice, got that one too. Now let's get ourselves. Is there nothing this way? I don't think there's anything this way. Yeah, we gotta go this way. Cool. So each character that I've played so far. Magnificent, but dangerous. A land of love found and of love lost. Hmm. It's like Pandora a little bit, I guess you would say. Maybe from, like, that whole movie, Avatar. But I don't know. I think this is um, its own world. I think this is... They did a really great job of world building with this. Before him was sacred ground, left untouched in days gone by. All right, cool. So let's get this. Remaining calm and collected, the shock of his heart skipping beats was concealed in expert fashion. <laughs> Before him stood Linda, his eldest daughter, with bow and quiver at the ready, determined yep. to do her part. So these are your first two characters that you can unlock, or that you have unlocked. There's no way around that. She will come with us. We can't uh, change that. The characters, um, you can only play with one other character. So we can use this divine relic as a gift from the god to help with the fight so we can unleash the power. Might as well try, and then we get an AoE around us, and that's why I kind of charged into him. Like I said, I played this before. So John, being the sword and board character, definitely has the leg up on Linda, but Linda makes up for it with um, actually being able to do damage at distance speeding, with a fair amount of utility to run away. Destroying others, they corrupted and distorted, creating even more hungry husks. Yes. Gross. Icky monsters. They ran away now. Gotta deal with the big boy there. There's those guys, come on. Yeah, see, like, look at Linda doing the damage at range is really helpful. This guy against the wall. Is there one down here? Oh, there are. They'll come at me, but Linda is just destroying them. Right now. Hey, no, over here. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. There we are. Cool. Nice. Pick up that heal. Both father and daughter gathered their thoughts, their hearts heavier than before. How would they explain what they had witnessed? So that's kind of the end of the tutorial. And then it's going to put us into the game proper. The ancient tree had been cut down. Together, father and daughter described the horror. The creatures dripping with decay that slithered into bodies stuck between life and death to mm -hmm. bolster their ranks. 
Grandma Margaret confirmed what they all feared. It was the corruption. A cruel entity spoken of only with hushed voices. An ocean of darkness that flowed from the top of Mount Morta. Mm -hmm. And the Bergson's duty was to stand against this devouring deluge of death. Kevin was also eager to do his part in the family's fight, especially when his older brother Mark was off somewhere. He was as much a guardian of their mountain home as any of them. So there's... She stood. If they were to reach the summit and destroy this evil, as the Bergsons of old had done in the past, they would need the assistance of the sanctuary. So there's four kids in all. Linda, Kevin, Mark, and then the littlest one. I don't remember her name right now. And then there's the unborn child as well, also, I guess. So five kids. No, four kids. No, no, actually, yeah. Yeah, f five kids if you want to get technical. You should get technical. And then you have um, John the, and then his brother. And then grandmother Given Margaret. Given to the Berksons by Rhea herself. The sanctuary was a gateway to the mysterious lands around the mountain. Margaret pointed to the huge crystal at the center of the den, revealing their next task, to activate it and open the way to the source of the corruption. And once Rhea's three spirits are gathered on the grounds, the only gate to the top of Mount Morta will open in this chamber. By himself, or with the assistance of those who loved him, John needed to gather the three spirits from their lands. Without them, he would not be able to stem the flow of the corruption. So, yeah, that's that's kind of it. Really, that's the whole crux of the game, is now we have that uh, transport essentially unlocked. We can't do anything up here. There is a codex, there's a library. It's very in-depth as well. But the great thing about this game is there's also a tooltip. The thing I think that also drew me into this game is the fact that in between missions, this central hub is alive. The characters talk, they're doing things. They're no longer, they're not static. You can actually look over in their rooms and see them moving or idling about or talking. You know, I think those fish could fly, their fins look too long for swim. So it's one of those things where you can just see like, this is, they did a great job with the world building for the the characters as well giving them some uh humanity some background All some of depth. must be here I okay. needs to be found so we saw john i'm gonna bring in linda let's do linda she starts off so when you have a new character unlocked you get no level ups you start off fresh so keep that in mind a you may have to replay a second shot chipped directly from the ancient crystal in the sanctuary it would be the Bergson's lifeline a tether to pull them back home before death's fateful whisper mm -hmm. so how Linda plays is very different from John and that's great that, that, that offers great utility filling the wine tunnels of the silk-covered caves, the acrid taste of poison lingered in the air. Ooh. Spiders. Mm -hmm. Linda told herself it was only target practice. As she readied her bow, they must find the spirit deep within the caves. All right. So Linda, I say this, this is what made me really uh, think of this game more as a twin stick shooter than in um, anything else because you can do the same tactics with John or with anyone. So Linda, you can use the right joystick and shoot in a direction, any direction that you can, okay? And then when you're moving, you can also shoot and move, but you see her stamina meter going down? That's what makes me think of twin stick shooting, but when you stop, it starts coming back slow and steady, slow and steady. She doesn't have as much life as John and she doesn't have as much armor, but she does have two dodges. And you can see that as by the orange meter that's split in half and those refill over time. So the tactics with Linda differ dramatically from how you have your tactics with John. You do not want to engage if you don't have to in close quarters. You wanna use terrain to your advantage. You wanna use everything to your advantage. 
Now, you'll notice why I'm not running across this. Any good adventurer knows these are spike traps. <laughs> and you need to run across them about as quick as possible. And those are more prevalent, I've felt, inside Linda's games than John's. Because they, um, oh, they uh, want you to engage closer with the characters or the enemies than you do otherwise. I was getting drawn in, I couldn't dodge. So now I'm going to run through here. And that's, the spike traps are the mechanic that they use for the um, monsters to bring them closer to Linda. But the cool thing about this game in the foresight that they had in this game is that you can use the traps to kill the monsters. That's awesome. So I'm going to fall back a little bit more. Keep shooting, keep shooting. Fall back a little bit more. Keep picking them off. Do not, you are not a stationary turret. You should not be playing this game if you're playing Linda as a stationary turret trying to engage. Um, you just won't win doing it that way. Now, I say there's Diablo style gameplay here because uh, also the monsters, but you're looking around constantly for gold. You're constantly looking around for gold, breaking pots, like very much like a Zelda game, looking for gold inside the pots. And the gold is integral. Your runs or your six. Uh, subsequent successful runs are definitely directed by how much gold you can obtain. No matter what you do, you want to make sure you're always on the lookout for pots to break or ways to get more gold because the net uh, boons and upgrades apply not just to one character but to the entire family as a whole. So when you're going through the game, you want to make sure you're looking at that. Everyone was encouraged to take part in a game of destiny. Oh, these. A prize awaited the fortuitous. There was only pain for the unfortunate. Yep, all right, let's, this one? Nope, wrong. All right, well, I'm, oh, you thought. I'm gonna fall back. So this is a little bit of a cheesy strategy, I know. Don't hate me for it. I found this during one of my other runs where I was playing through. They can't, the enemy cannot break through these blue walls or gold walls as you go through. So use that to your advantage um, when, you're, when you're fighting a particularly tough room. I think that's a really good quality of life. Uh, even though it does look like you're cheesing the game, I think that it's there on purpose. And this game has been out for a while now, so if they wanted to patch it out, they really should have. And I don't think they did. I don't think they want to patch it out. I think they want you to play the game like that because you need that utility in certain situations. I'm going to get her another ability, her other ability here, um, which is a, a volley of arrows, which is really helpful as an opening salvo. Oh, I got stuck on a wall there. Especially when you see a bunch of enemies. All right, there we are. Cool. Awesome. These bats are just, I, 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 they're, they're the nemesis. Dodge through, get some gold. Oh, I got netted. Just finish that guy with the arrow. Oh, I didn't finish him. Okay, fine, fair enough. Thought it would, but it didn't. All right. Whoa. There, that that's what I'm talking about. Those little those guys are really awful. They close the gap on you pretty quick. Now you'll see my stamina went down and then I turned into a stationary turret. You don't want that to happen in uh, the middle of a situation when you're trying to shoot and then all of a sudden you're you know you're getting uh, run up on and you don't have the ability to run away. So keep that in mind for your um, your playstyle if you don't like the the way Linda would run. Um, and you have to be on a swivel. You have to. There's no way around. Uh, oh, we got our first um, charm. You ignore the next five... Wow, that's actually a pretty strong talisman. That's a hugely powerful talisman. So those talismans are consumed when you use them. When you, you press the down arrow, those will be consumed. And you get a, a fair number of them in a run. Uh, and there's a lot of varying ones out there for... Um, uh, shields for damage for turning things into money for all sorts of things so keep your head on the lookout for those and when they're consumed that's, there's no harm in you know using it increases the max health at the expense of decreasing primary attack damage nope don't like that 
We'll drop that right on that one that one spider in particular. And I'll lose my stamina meter here in a sec. There we go, cool. Finish off the bat. What was that in the water? I didn't see. Drop that link there. Dodge back. Nice, okay, cool. Got that guy there. Break these pots. If I can break these pots. There we are, cool. Yeah, a few bucks is a few bucks, and that's hugely helpful. Trust me. It is hugely helpful later game. Absolutely. All right, let's get into the next room. So these uh, dungeons seem to be procedurally generated, and that's fine by me. I don't think that's a bad idea at all, because that gives variety for the player. You get all these different side quests as well. When you play through, I'm going to do the stamina decrease, harmonize. Yes, I will do it. Having that will not hurt our play at all, because we're reducing the amount of stamina we use, and it's a meaningful upgrade. Everything, everything here has been meaning... Every upgrade I've ever picked up has dramatically improved and... Uh, uh, and change the, the way I play the game for the better. So keep that in mind. They've done a really great job balancing the characters and making all their upgrades feel very impactful in a good way. And the drip feed on certain abilities coming to you at a later date is really helpful. All right, let's get ourselves back up in here. Let's go down here. These bats. Come on. There we are. The one thing that Linda lacks, I think, in this might frustrate people, is there's there's a very fickle or finicky um, AI or aiming that goes along with her character. And I'm not trying to say that's a bad, bad thing, but it certainly is nuanced. Like, she'll be, I don't know, inches in front of something and not hit it. You would expect her to hit something. But then, all of a sudden, like, she's sniping things across the map. Which is, again, very confusing. Like, the more you, more I play her, the better or more accustomed I got to it. But it certainly was something that took a little getting used to. And I think that's intentional. These things right here that you're seeing covered with the corruption, they get unlocked later. I'm not going to tell you what they are. But those are really helpful with another upgrade. And by upgrade, I'm talking about simply just playing the game will unlock those for you guys. There's no uh, secret upgrade. Oh, I'm going to hit Yep, because I ran out of stamina. I was talking, and I wasn't focused. There we are. Cool. Shouldn't It should make sure I'm, you know, not running low on stamina as I'm talking to you guys. And I'm by no means an expert. I shouldn't say that I, uh, I from a position of playing this game, I have played this game a grand total of maybe 20 hours at, no, not, I'm sorry, not 20 hours, maybe like two hours at this point. So feel free to tell me I'm completely and totally wrong. I expect it. All right, so we'll go through here. And then at the end of every floor, I've Energy seen an upgrade. Throw an axe. Before the heat, an object of the device. Nice. So this is a cool thing for every upgrade or every run. You can press the over arrow and you can see what each item you have does. It's really actually super helpful. Did I leave some places unexplored? That would be really foolish of me if I did. All right, well. I did, but at least I'm at... F I think I did, but if I didn't... All right, great. Oh, jeepers. I'm gonna... Yep, this is gonna suck. Yep, yep, yep. Gonna get back here where there's places for me to fall back to. And I'm gonna do this. Oh, no, I'm stuck. Oh, no, I'm stuck. Dodge through. I wish there was a, a hallway of traps that I could do. Oh, I'm glad I dodged that. Oh man, ooh boy. Sorry if that was a little loud. Ooh boy, that was uh, that was intense. That was intense. I I was almost that would have been a run ender for me. Like if I hadn't had uh, a little bit more practice, a little time and Oh no, no, I got hit. That's just annoying. These guys from the edge of the map, I don't care. I'm not too proud. Hit that guy and blow it up. Oh, it didn't kill him. Oh, that hit me, though. Shoot. Alright, webs on the ground. Super annoying. Little spider guys. Super annoying. Getting the level up. Super awesome. Alright, 
cool. So let's see here. I probably want to wait. I'm going to wait. I hit that plant and I didn't realize it. All right. Well, I paid for that. Let's go in here. Where the heck did you come from? Were you stuck on a rock back there? Probably was, actually. That's a that's one of the things that I've seen. Like, I'll clear a room out, and I'll go back through for, like, if I've missed anything. And all of a sudden, I'll, like, run into one or two mobs. And it's just like, oh, they, the pathfinding in the game is good. It's not impeccable, though. So it's one of those things that you want to make sure you're aware of if you're going back through a certain dungeon that was difficult. Uh, there's also kill combos. As you see here, you get bonus gold for the amount of time that you can chain kills together. Highly incentivizes aggressive play, which is really cool and really good. Keeps the player engaged and keeps them wanting to go into fights as opposed to skirting them or anything like that. Uh, and we already found the way down to the next floor. So we're going to actually leave that there. I'm going to continue to... F I don't want to say farm, but I'm going to continue to go through this floor. Back up. So you'll notice I'm not able to um, stun this guy. I think I said that before. Oh, yeah, there. Good. Okay, good. Hey, we got a key. So we can use that on one of these chests over here. And get... Oh, some reward. Nice. Finish this off here. Get this. Hello? Nice money. Nice. Ow. Nice. Okay, I want to get... I would love to get another relic. Get that. Let it blow up. Doesn't look like I can get another relic, which would be, which is kind of a disappointment. He says as he takes another hit. Dodge back, dodge back. There's that guy. There's that guy there. Good stun that person out of theirs. Saw you come in from the side of the screen. Finish that guy. Finish that guy. There. Awesome. Nice. Okay. So I'm going to keep on exploring this place. Getting more stuff before I go down the next floor. That's what I'm going to do. Aww. So this is the side quest that I was talking about that you can unlock. It's almost now, like... Truly a divine emotion. Especially during dark days. Love had motivated this mother to lay down her life for her cub. Alright, still only the one. So you notice the room turned red. Simply meaning that we are in here, we can't leave. We were locked in the room, which I wasn't going to go anywhere. I was going to fight, save this wolf puck up. To try and rouse her from eternal slumber. And it would be love welcoming the new orphan among the Bergsons. Mm hmm So we rescued the wolf cub. Nice. So there are side quests that you get throughout the entirety of the game. Some of them are super easy. Some of them are super hard. A lot of them are RNG, is what it comes down to. The last thing I would in, uh, hate to do is draw this comparison um, without you understanding. There, It seems like there is a Dark Souls mechanic here where there's no happy endings. It's like, uh, maybe not Dark Souls, but maybe Bloodborne, where there's just no happy endings. And it's not to say that it's not compelling and you don't want to still see the characters' uh, stories and understand how they get to their tragedy or you know how they get through uh uh their trials tribulations and otherwise difficulties but yeah it's, i i have a really hard time seeing the silver lining in a lot of some of these stories because of some of the narrative choices they've chosen for the characters I'm back up i'm gonna drop this there and i'm gonna drop this and then just stand this here and then keep sniping Good. But yeah, I feel like there's there's just not a real sense of like joy in the game 
uh, overall is it's a very compelling story and it's a very engaging story and it makes you invo it makes me emotionally invested anyways maybe it's because of the family dynamic i don't know but it's definitely one of those things that you wouldn't or at least i didn't expect myself to care as much as i care for the characters and i think that's a really uh that's just a sign of a good game that's just a sign of a good uh good story drop that right there finish those so it doesn't look like the axe penetrates through. It looks like as soon as it hits the target, it stops, which is a bit of an, uh, a letdown, but it's all good. All right, let's get through here and get this. So the combos are actually super helpful with gaining some extra money, um, especially if you're short on funds in between runs. You can look for those combos and look for those aggressive uh, playstyles because I haven't seen a reason why not to just throw caution to the wind in certain runs and just try and get as much as you can out of the combos. Uh, case in point, we're going to go into that room in a moment. I want to see if I can find a couple um, a couple other things right there. Oh, there was, a, there was like a little fish monster or something like that in the hallway there. I'm trying to get another skill point so I can get uh, some more stamina back for running around. Being on the move, because that's really the limiting factor for the DPS for us. There it is, right there. So, let's do that. Yes. And now we've got, after spending enough skill points, each family member unlocks a new trait. Family traits benefit all family members as well. If a family member grows in power, the entire family. So, this is movement speed, essentially, as it comes down to. Is it raw It doesn't give me a percentage, but I'm assuming that it's, you know, probably like 2%, 3%, or something like that. Or maybe it's even a little bit more meaningful. Maybe it's like 10%. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. But movement speed seems to be one of the bigger um, boons in the game. Like, if you can get movement speed, that is super helpful in a lot of different um, settings, uh, regardless of your run or character. Movement speed seems to be the uh, uh, run maker or run ender, is what it comes down to. Uh, where are we at? We gotta go up north, and there's a whole section to the left. Okay, let's go do that. Let's get ourselves up north here and do this right here get inside here this will be fun not all in the caves were refugees some were just traveling merchants stuck in a vine uh-huh merchant i was trying to get another Yeah, see, we're already bleeding a lot less uh, stamina when we're moving, and that's hugely helpful because we're able to strike around infinitely more. And that's all good because that first boss is going to be a nightmare if we don't have a 60 kill streak in this room. Oh! Fall back. Jump this way. Yeah, John's playstyle isn't necessarily as active as that. looking shopkeep dusted off his clothes, tipped his hat. He invited them to stop by his shop later. Nice. Dungeons, dungeon shops are now open. I'll take that. Codex of Protection. What does that do? Oh, okay, cool. So whenever I activate... So this one on cooldown, it gives me a cooldown, but it gives me... Uh, basically ignores damage on the next two hits. That's going to be insanely helpful for just damage mitigation overall. Now let's get ourselves up into this chest right here. Oh, cool. What is this one? Uh, deal massive amount of damage to yourself and enemy. Ooh, no. Don't want that. Don't want that at all. Your Our health pool is atrocious. We That would be awful. That'd be just asking for our game to end. And I don't want that to end. But it looks like we are actually uh, way over our time. I'm sorry, I was not even looking at our time together. So this was Busy Gamer Dad showing you Children of Morda. I love this game. I think they did an excellent job. This is a game that I didn't know existed. I love doing these types of games for you guys so that you know that they existed. This is a roguelite where you play as a family of heroes that's trying to stem the world's corruption uh, at the source. And we'll see how it goes in our next playthrough where I pick it up. I'll be a little bit further along. And I hope that you guys will join us there. Like, comment, subscribe if you feel so inclined. We'll catch you later. Bye.